This propeller tutorial features exciting workflows and don't miss the end, I'll show you one of my favorite rendering setups. Keyboard shortcuts appear in the bottom left corner when used, as shown here when we follow the first rule of Fusion and set up a new component. The vertical construction plane facing this direction is the ideal starting point for our center diameter circle sketch, as we'll return to this view several times throughout the tutorial. I'm making a cute tiny propeller for a toy boat, but I encourage you to test your own dimensions as you follow along. There are many ways to create a solid cylinder with a hole in the middle. In this tutorial, I'm offsetting the circular sketch and extruding the profile between the circles. I prefer this orientation, so I'll reverse the extrusion direction before setting the distance to 50 mm. The suggested new body operation and other settings work for my workflow, so I'll confirm them as is. Create a new sketch on the vertical construction plane behind the cylinder. Use lines, dimensions and splines to shape the propeller blade, defining the leading and trailing edges with smooth curves. Quickly rough out the sketch without worrying about precision at this stage. This 2D sketch is just a starting point. We'll shape the blade using a mix of Fusion Solid and Surface modeling tools. The dimensions in this sketch aren't optimized for propeller hydrodynamics. This exercise isn't about designing a functional propeller that converts engine power into thrust. Fluid dynamics, mechanics and material science are beyond the scope of this tutorial. Use as few control points as possible when creating fit point splines. Aim for 80% accuracy at first and refine later. Smooth out transitions between splines and lines using the green handles. They adjust in multiple directions and can be different lengths. Reposition the black control points with your mouse to refine the sketch. If needed, right-click the spline to add more points, but keep them to a minimum. The final 3D propeller blade depends on more than just this sketch, so we'll move forward now that it's good enough. Create a new sketch on the same construction plane we just used. This line will help define the 3D propeller shape. I placed it in a separate sketch, keeping it distinct from the propeller sketch in the timeline. Separating features can make edits easier and prevent clutter in the timeline. The exact length doesn't matter. Just make it longer than needed so we can use what's necessary and discard the rest. We need another line, this time on the opposite side of the cylinder. The modeling might feel abstract now, but trust that it will all make sense soon. Set this line at an angle. There's no exact value, just keep it outside the propeller sketch. Again, we're creating excess geometry to work with, which is often faster than trying to get the exact shape from the start. Excluding the initial sketches for the cylinder, you should now have three sketches. Two on the vertical construction plane at the bottom of the cylinder and one on the top face. Save your project regularly. Use the surface modeling loft command to create a lofted surface from the two lines. Unlike the solid loft, this works with open profiles like lines. The lofted surface is too small, so we'll make it larger in a moment. Fusion makes adjustments easy, so don't worry about precision yet. First, use the surface modeling extrude command to extrude the propeller blade profile. This helps visualize the adjustments needed for the lofted lines. I'll set the extrusion to match the cylinder's length since the propeller will fit onto its end. Next, we'll fill the gap between the lofted surface and the extruded profile. One option is to rewind and adjust the sketch, but I'll show a faster way. 
extending the lofted profile with the extend command. This lets us see the result immediately. Precise sizing isn't crucial. We just need enough material to work with. The trim tool in surface modeling makes removing excess surfaces simple. First, select the trim tool, our extruded propeller sketch, then choose the surface to trim, the lofted surface between the lines. Once trimmed, hide the extruded propeller blade. This leaves us with a thin propeller surface ready for the next step. Regularly checking your work from different angles is a simple way to maintain quality. Now we need to remove the excess surface inside the cylinder. The split face tool works well here. Select the propeller surface as the surface to split and the cylinder's outside face as the splitting tool. Once split, delete the unwanted face and continue refining the propeller. Before continuing with the propeller blade, I'll make a few adjustments to the cylinder. First, I'll add a 5mm fillet on each side. With a 10mm thickness, there's enough room for these dimensions to create a smooth top edge. Next, I'll create a symbolic thread inside the cylinder. This is just a visual detail. If you plan to 3D print a thread, be sure to check modeled in the thread settings. Keeping it visual simplifies the model and speeds up performance, though for a small model like this, it won't make much difference. I'm thickening this surface to 2 mm as a new body. This keeps the propeller blade separate from the cylinder, allowing for independent adjustments. After applying the Thicken command, a new solid body appears in the project browser. A quick check from different angles using the view cube confirms that everything looks correct. I'm applying appearances before creating the remaining propellers. This speeds up the process since I only need to assign an appearance to one blade. A useful tip when searching for appearances is to focus on the finish rather than the color. For example, Searching for glossy brings up red, white and yellow glossy paints in one go, reducing the need for multiple searches. This red and white color combination has a classic look, so let's move on. Once again, we're rewarded for centering our design around the predefined axis at the origin. After selecting the objects and axis for the circular pattern, simply press OK. If you need to update the blade colors later, just go back in the timeline to the step where we applied the appearance to a single blade. Everything looks good, so let's set up a nice rendering in the render workspace. Right-click the canvas and open Scene Settings. In the Contextual menu, change the background from Solid Color to Environment. Then, drag and drop the Photo Boot setting onto the scene from the Environment Library before closing the Scene Settings. Use the View Cube, Pan and Zoom options to set the camera angle. You can also reposition the object left or right for a different perspective. I'm holding down the scroll wheel to pan around like this. Once you're happy with the setup, open render settings, adjust the width and height if needed, and start your cloud rendering. The rendering appears instantly in the rendering gallery in the bottom left corner, along with a time estimate for completion. Let's wrap up this Fusion tutorial on prototyping a propeller with a few key notes. Drop a comment below if you have video ideas, questions or alternative workflows to share. Also, check the video description for additional learning resources and exclusive deals. If you found this tutorial helpful, I recommend watching this one, where you learn how to create a twisted bracket.
Thanks for watching and see you soon in another tutorial from The Maker Letters.